Hello everyone, I'm Maria Inés Marcone, Head of the Hematology and Hemostasis Section of the Ricardo Gutierrez Children's Hospital, located in the autonomous city of Buenos Aires, Argentina. Today I'm going to present a clinical case about immune-mediated thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura in pediatrics. Immune-mediated thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, EPTTP, is one of the thrombotic microangiopathies which comprise entities with very diverse characteristics. They should be suspect when a patient presents one or more of the following manifestations. Neurological symptoms, such as confusion on seizures, impaired renal function, characterized by increased creatinine, decreased glomerular filtration rate, hypertension, and pathological urinary sediment or gastrointestinal symptoms with uh, diarrhea, with or without blood. Nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and gastrointestinal uh, gastroenteritis are usually observed. Regarding the laboratory, these patients have thrombocytopenia defined by platelet count less than 150,000 or a decrease of 25% compared to Vaseline. This thrombocytopenia occurs in conjunction with microangiopathic hemolytic anemia characterized by schistocytes greater than 1% in the peripheral blood smear increase LDH and decrease aptoglobin and hemoglobin. The entities that we must differentiate when we are in the presence, presence of TMEA are thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, hemolytic uremic syndrome, and other cause that present with microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, such as those mentioned in this slide. TTP is a medical emergency it should be considered and treated immediately since it has a mortality of 19% without treatment in the acute stage. It can be congenital or immune-mediated. Congenital TTP is more frequent in pediatrics. The differential diagnosis should be made mainly with hemolytic uremic syndrome associated with complement alteration since the one associated with infection is mainly related to E. coli O. Uh, 157 and is the main cause of TMEA in pediatrics. TTP is defined as a pathology in which there is a severe deficiency of the metalloprotease ADAM13. It is an uncommon disease. In global literature, two to six cases per million individuals are described. It uh, has an acute, potentially fatal outcome. In these individuals, ADAM13 activity is less than 10% or 10 units per milliliter. It can be congenital, which, as stated above, is more frequent in pediatrics, or immune-mediated, which usually occurs in adults. Both entities require lifelong treatment, and the clinical manifestations have to do with tissue ischemia generated by the formation of microtrombi. However, they are common to several pathologies, which makes the laboratory of vital importance to confirm the diagnosis. ADAM13 is directly involved in the pathophysiology of the disease. It's a desintegrin and metalloprotease, which is encoded in chromosome 9. Its synthesis is mainly hepatic. Its target is the ultra-large multimers of von Willebrand factor. Under high flow conditions, this multimer opens and ADAM13 clips the peptide bond, reducing it to smaller forms and preventing the formation of microtrombi. If ADAM13 is absent, the ultra-large multimers stick together platelets and form microtrombi that cause vascular occlusion and are responsible for the symptoms of TTP. It's important to make diagnostic algorithms to confirm each entity. The algorithm will depend on the test available in the institution. Below, we will describe the clinical case. A previously healthy 15-year-old patient is present, referred from another institution due to presenting neurological symptoms, vomiting, and fatigue. On physical examination at our hospital, she was found to be in good general condition, a fever with jordins and generalist petechia and breathing. No maces or enlarged lymph nodes are palpable. NMR and geography of the central nervous system is unremarkable. 
As background, the patient had present a metrorrhagia of 10 days of evolution, ceasing one day before entering our institution. Upon admission of the patient, the complete blood count performed on the MindRise 6800 plus hematology counter shows leukocyte within the referent interval for Asian sex, hemoglobin, hematocrit, and decreased platelets with increased reticulocytes. The equipment throw an alarm for red blood cell fragments, which should be investigated in the peripheral blood smear. Also, the MindRise brings a percent of these cell types, but is a RUO parameter. In the peripheral blood smear, uh, the presence of schistocytes greater uh, than 1%, polychromatophilia and erythroblasts stand out. With regard to chemistry, performed on the Roche Covas 6000 autoanalyzer, preserved renal function was observed. Increased total bilirubin at expense of indirect and markedly elevated. LDH. The coagulogram is without alterations. A direct Coombs test was performed, which was negative. Given these results, we can say that we are in the presence of a thrombotic microangiopathy. From what has been explained above, we can say that due to the preserved renal function and severe thrombocytopenia, TTP is suspect. To confirm it, we proceed to study the activity of ADAM13 by a technosine chromogenic ELISA. ADAM13 activity was less than 10%. Against this value, the presence of the inhibitor should be studied by another chromogenic ELISA from the same laboratory. The result was positive from the EGG isotype. Given this, we can confirm that the patient is experiencing immune-mediated thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and the triggering cause cannot be established, so we call idiopathic E-TTP. Finally, treatment with corticosteroids and intensive plasma exchange is to start uh, more than 20 cycles. Given a partial response to treatment and the confirmed diagnosis of E-TTP, it was decided to escalate it to rituximab, which in our country is one of the drugs of choice for this pathology. In the platelet graph, the cortical pools can be observed with the orange aroused and the rituximab pools in green, evidencing how despite the unstable course and the infections that it present through the treatment, after starting rituximab therapy, platelets begin to increase as well as hemoglobin and a notable decrease in reticulocytes and LDH is observed. In the following table, it can be seen how after starting the treatment, the activity of ADAM13 begins to increase and its inhibitor becomes negative. In conclusion, we can say that it is essential to have a technology that allows us to measure platelets with high precision since the presence of schistocytes characteristic of TMA is an interference in the measurement of platelets by the impedance method. In our case, the MindRay uh, 6800 plus has a double platelet measurement method in addition to the possibility of an extended count at the user's discretion. Having the activity measurement of ADAM13 and the study of the inhibitor, EGG, within the required time less than uh, 72 hours are extremely important to maintain or change the treatment started when TMA is confirmed. Despite the low incidence of eTTP in pediatric population, it is essential to know the pathophysiology for the correct approach and the early start of treatment. It is important to maintain an active record of these rare pathologies in order to obtain data from our region and propose strategies for the treatment of this pathology. Thank you very much for your attention. Any question is welcome.